Okay, so we're back with this Mostix uh, 3018 CNC uh, machine. Uh, I decided to solder these spade connections onto the motor. They were just so loose and even tighten up the spade. It would just still work loose. I wasn't happy with that. So that's now soldered in place. We can uh, unclip the other end and remove the motor, you know, to replace it with the laser unit as required. And uh, one of the things, the first things I thought would be sensible is to protect this aluminium uh, work tray. Um, We've got a Genmitsu MDF spoil board for any of the 3018s. There are some fittings there. Uh, oh, some instructions is that. Yep, some instructions. And the reason I like this one over others is it because it came with uh, these markings. Whether they're quite square or not, I don't know. We'll find out, but I just thought that would be useful. Um, I think these corners just pop off. Yeah, it's just a bit of transport section. Looks well made. Okay, if it's any MDF, but it uh, looks like they've embedded the various nuts uh, quite well. There's a few places that this will screw into the bed. And then hopefully all of these are the same. Let's just run this forward. Over the weekend we'll be covering the software installation, enabling uh, these limit switches and that sort of thing. So I'm hoping this is the same as every other one. That's a little bit shorter. It looks like the slots all line up. I can't imagine what the instructions have got to say. But let's have a look. So, hex wrench, spoil board, a few screws, a couple of slider nuts, and assembly guide. So, yeah, you're just using M5 by 16 screws through the top into nuts underneath uh, in the countersunk hole. So, really, no need for any instructions for this. If you can't work this out, you probably shouldn't be operating one of these machines. Yeah, nice to see the hex keys um, divided, but uh, if it's anything like the hex keys that came with the machine, they're really only good for assembly and then you can shuck them straight in the bin. So yeah, it looks like we've just got to feed a few of these through there. So that's the end one, and oh yeah, just oh well, one in the middle. Quite a lot to review actually over the weekend. Um, mostly little bits and pieces for this. And uh, an inexpensive backup pat tester. Now, oh, have they given us a spare one of those? Yeah, I guess they have. So I'm guessing that is a smack bang in the middle. Yeah, so we'll put that in line with the spindle. Another one there and there, and then again, slide that across so it lines up pretty closely to the hull, and we should be good to go. No washers or anything, just the domed heads that should be absolutely fine.
And again a spare one, which is uh, quite nice. this around to line the screws up. Get one pane in the back side. Screw. I suppose we could have just put them on loosely and then just slid them in from the end, but uh, mm. we'll talk about making a dog's dinner of it. Jeez. Right, so that's in, so let's just line this up pretty much in the middle. That feels pretty good. Same old story, absolute rubbish, Alan Key's already rounded off. Now I'll probably switch over to the 3D printer, Alan Key's in a minute, just to finally tighten that up because that is absolutely knackered <laughs> pretty much immediately. So that can go in the bin with the plastic bags and uh, Nice to have a spare retainer and nut, and um, there we are, that is done. That has obviously raised things up by, I forget what the measurement was, Twelve mil. about right, 12 mil perhaps. So yeah, there we go. Gen Mitsu uh, spoiler board. And uh, yeah, that's the first upgrade, if you can call it. <laughs> right, so as I tried to zoom in there, I hit the pause button by mistake, and I've just done it two more times. So um, actually, I had a closer look at these uh, little bolts that go through. And the heads are quite badly damaged uh, already from this uh, stupid cheap key. So I think we've got a bit of a combination of uh, 
rubbish screws and even poorer allen key uh, that's caused that so yeah I'm not uh, massively impressed with that the board itself uh, you know, is uh, fine whether it is level or not is another story I believe this sort of thing would normally be uh, machined uh, to uh, be completely flat on your machine but then that would take away the <laughs> markings so I'm hoping that it is actually uh, level if not then yeah we're going to have to just take the surface off but hopefully it's okay we'll, we'll see but I just like the idea of protecting the surface now of course what isn't going to work now are these uh, little clamps because that should be uh, one of those would be underneath in the grooves and then you would clamp down onto the workpiece so I don't know how that's going to uh, to work it will screw in there so don't really know how we're going to get that to work. <clears throat> or if it even can, so it might be a question of double-sided tape and sticking things down. I did get some plastic clamps and unfortunately I didn't realise how big they are, so they're a completely different CNC setup. They are absolutely uh, massive. So, uh, yeah. I'll have to have a play around with uh, these bits and pieces. I wonder if we can just things down like that. Well, I guess you haven't really got the adjustment because that is a fixed position. So you might be able to do it that way for certain things. Yeah maybe that will just tighten up enough to hold it down. This is on a thread though so it's probably not going to do the job. Let's uh, take that back out. Let's see what happens if we put the bolt through the slot. Yeah, I'm sure we'll come up with some sort of combination of uh, that type of idea to get these clamped down. So, yeah, hopefully that will be uh, fine. Uh, I was also looking at the very slight amount of movement we've got in here and where that's coming from. But it does just look like it is these bars twisting the other machines with supports running down the sides here but there's no way we can do that easily um, without 
Well, maybe we can. There are there is a bolt going through here which we could perhaps bring down, but it would need a spacer here. So there's a few things that are possible perhaps, but it's the movement here that seems that would really affect things. Just that slight movement, I'm not even sure you can see it, but it's there. Anyway, I don't suppose we'll be doing any high, super high precision stuff uh, with this. Anyway, so that was uh, a not so quick look at the Jemnitsu spoil uh, board.